Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this obviously very realistic and sensible pink panther. Get it? That's probably not even close to how it went, but you can see the joke I'm making? No? The pink panther? And it's a panther? And it's pink? Ha ha ha! I sure am funny. So, if you're looking for hyper-realistic paint schemes, you're probably in the wrong place. This model is the 28mm scale Panther in plastic by Italeri. It's the same as the plastic version Warlord Cell. It's not a bad model, but it does have its flaws. The biggest one for me is the hull machine gun port. Also, there's a bit of a gap in the front armour where the upper and lower hull parts join, but that's mostly my fault. If you want to see my build video for this model, you can click the card in the top right or the link in the description. Let's get to painting. I primed the model with AK Interactive Grey Surface Primer. It's an okay primer, but it was a little bit thick. When painting colours like pink or red or yellow, it's a good idea to use a light coloured primer like grey or white. It just means you'll have to do fewer coats to get a nice solid colour. I base coat the entire model with Vallejo Model Color Magenta. I apply this in a few fairly thin coats. Doing it this way will prevent the details from being filled in with excess paint. Eventually, I have a good, strong, solid, very vivid coat of magenta. That's a fantastic colour. Also, don't forget to paint the turret too. That would be very silly indeed, and we're not about silly here. I airbrushed on some highlighting using a mixture of one part model colour magenta and three parts model colour pink. I guess you would say this is a kind of zenithal highlighting. I'm spraying directly down onto the top of the model. The idea is to represent the light from the sun directly overhead, making the vehicle look a little bit lighter on top. It's pretty subtle in the end with this model, but I feel it adds a little something. The final highlight with the airbrush is plain model colour pink. Of course, thinned appropriately for airbrushing. I focus this onto certain details on the upper areas of the tank. Things like the hatches, fan covers, machine gun port and so forth. I try not to go too far with this. I do want it to be subtle. Of course, don't forget the turret. It receives the same treatment, including a light spray along the top of the main gun. Now for a wash. I make a mix of Army Painter Red Tone and Water. The mix is roughly one part Red Tone and four parts Water. I brush this mix all over the model, making sure to let it accumulate in all the gaps and recesses. I wasn't entirely sure how well this would work, but I wanted something to darken down the gaps and corners without making the tank look too dirty like a brown or black wash probably would. I ended up doing two coats of this and was quite satisfied by the result. Next, I dry brushed the entire model with a fairly heavy dry brushing of model colour pink. The raised details and edges of the model catch this very well and it creates further highlighting. It also creates a kind of scratchy, worn look. It looks a bit excessive now, but it gets toned down after the weathering and such. Here, I haven't applied the dry brushing to the turret yet, and you can see it makes a huge difference. For the better, I think. I do of course apply it to the turret after. We do want a matching turret after all. Speaking of the turret, I next applied some Minotaur gloss varnish to the sides of the turret where I plan to apply the decals. I have decided to use the decals from one of the various Rubicon German vehicles that I've built. The main reason for this is that I just didn't think the decals Italeri included would work very well with a pink base colour because all the numbers on that sheet are red. It would just blend in too well. I apply the decals in the usual way, using Humbrol decal fix, patience and a bit of fiddling. I don't normally like tanks with Zimmerit, but in this case it functioned really nicely as a guide for getting the decals level with each other. I have no idea if this decal placement is accurate in any way, but it's a pink panther. Come on. I then take a fine brush and some model colour magenta and add a couple of small scratches to the decals to represent where the markings have been chipped. I didn't want to go overboard with this. I do want this to be a fairly clean tank. Next, I do some sponge chipping. I'm trying to do this effect fairly lightly, though I do often manage to go overboard with it. It's really easy to go overboard with it. The most recent Herbert Erberderp's Quick Tips demonstrates this technique, so I won't go into depth here. If you want to check that video out, click the card in the upper right or the link in the description. The colour I have used here is a mix of model colour black grey and model colour mahogany. It was roughly two parts black grey to one part mahogany, though the mix I use for this does vary every time. I just use what I think looks best at the time. You should use your own judgement for things like this. If you want to add long scratches, you can use the same colour and a fine brush and just paint them on. 
I think this works best when done sparingly. It's also a good way to add chips to the areas the sponge can't reach. Next, I paint the tracks. I decided to try something different to what I would normally do, and I painted these black using Vallejo Model Air Black. Obviously, I'm being careful to avoid getting black paint onto the areas that need to remain pink. Also, I'm avoiding the tires on the road wheels. They'll be a different colour. I wasn't entirely pleased with the result, but it's good enough, and weathering will certainly improve it. It's good to experiment and try things. It is only a model. If it turns out bad, you can always start again. I then paint the tyres with Vallejo Model Air German Grey. I carefully brush this onto the rubber areas of the wheels, trying as hard as I can to avoid getting it on the tracks and rims of the wheels. I can, of course, always fix it later, but it's obviously best to try and eliminate extra steps later by doing it neatly the first time. I really like the different colours on the tyres and tracks. It makes them stand out a little bit. It was at this point I realised I'd forgotten to paint the spare track links on the sides of the hull, so I painted those black too. You could always say they were painted pink with the rest of the tank, but having some different colour on the sides of the hull will help break up the base colour and will look much more interesting in the end. I then continue using the Model Air German Grey and paint the barrel of the hull machine gun and the metal parts of the tools that are stored all around the hull. A lot of these details were a little bit flat, so they were kind of tricky to paint without getting grey on the hull itself. It would be easier if they were more pronounced and raised, but sometimes you just have to work with what you've got. I suppose. Just take your time and go slowly. Next, still using the German grey, I dry brush the tracks. I figured this would just add a little highlighting to add a bit of interest and depth. This time, I remembered to include the spare track links with the rest of them. I wasn't worried about being too careful or neat with this, but I was trying to avoid getting it on the pink areas. I think it's looking pretty good so far, but those rims on the road wheels look a little bit messy. I fix them with model colour pink. I just gently apply this around the rims. As you can see, I haven't applied this to the forward wheels yet. It works nicely as a highlight, and it gives the wheels quite a bit of depth. Next, I paint the wooden handles on the various tools. For this, I used model colour beige brown. I quite like using this colour for wooden handles. Again, go slowly and carefully with this. The parts not being very raised, I had the most trouble painting neatly around the edges, so just be careful. I then painted the jacking block with model colour mahogany. I just wanted it to look a little bit different to the wood on the tool handles. This is pretty easy to paint, just be careful to avoid the straps holding the block in place. I highlighted the upper edge of this with beige brown, just to add interest. I then painted the exhaust pipes with Vallejo model colour chocolate brown. I figured this would be a nice base colour for some slightly rusty exhaust pipes. Also, I didn't thin this paint. It's quite a thick paint, and I thought this would help create that slightly rough texture that rusty exhaust pipes have. Not sure how effective it was, but it's worth trying. I will of course apply more rusty effects here later. Next, I applied undiluted Army Painter Strong Tone to all of the wooden tool handles and the jacking block. Then, I used undiluted Dark Tone on all the metal components of the tools. This helps darken them down a bit and add a kind of shadow around the edges of the part to help hide any roughness where the pink and grey meet. I also put some of this Dark Tone in the slit in the headlamp. Then, I gloss varnished the entire model in order to protect the acrylic paint from the next steps in which I will be using enamels. The first of which was AK Interactive Enamel Track Wash on the tracks, which doesn't seem to be too outrageous a use for this colour. I just kind of slop it onto the tracks, though I am, of course, careful to avoid getting it on the road wheels and hull, though a little bit here and there shouldn't hurt, and it would be easily removed anyway. I then apply AK Interactive Panel Liner for brown and green camo to some of the gaps. This is obviously not green or brown camouflage, but I figured it would look fine anyway. Just because it says something on the bottle doesn't mean that's the only use the product could have. I didn't apply this to all of the gaps. I mostly focused this around the tools, gaps in the side skirts, around hatches, and engine deck details. I also apply it to the hubs on the road wheels and around the outside of the rims, just to add some interest there. It's okay to be a little messy with this. It is hard to perfectly paint it into the gaps, though capillary action certainly does help, but it is normal to get a little slop around the areas you apply this. 
If it looks bad, we can always clean it off, which is the next step. I take a clean brush with clean thinner on it and use it to wipe away or at least thin out the panel liner that's got into areas where I don't want it. I really like this about using enamels. It's important to apply the gloss varnish under the enamels though, or doing this would destroy the layers of acrylic paint and that would be upsetting. Next, I applied AK Interactive Rust Streaks to the exhaust pipes. I'm just painting it onto the pipes kind of thin. It's not streaked on, obviously, but it doesn't have to be streaked. That's just a serving suggestion. Then, after another coat of gloss varnish, I very lightly sprayed a very diluted mix of AK Interactive Summer Kursk Earth. I did not accurately measure the ratio that I used. It's something like one part Kursk Earth to five or six parts thinner. It's very thin. I then used my airbrush to dust it on, because strangely enough, I wanted it to look like dust. I focus this on the lower parts of the vehicle, but I do spray some onto the turret too, just so it doesn't look out of place. I want this effect to be fairly subtle, just enough to make it look like the tank has been out in the field, maybe in an armoured column on a slightly dusty road or something. Next, I used AK Interactive Light Rust Wash to add a bit more of a rust colour to the exhausts. It did go on a little bit strong, so after I applied it, I thinned it down on the model with some clean thinner. Though I didn't film this. I did this because I didn't want the rust to be an obtrusive bright orange. After all that had set and dried, to simulate some soot on the exhausts, I apply some undiluted dark tone to the pipes. I was considering using my airbrush to lightly spray a little black around the area but decided against it. In my mind the engine is running well enough and not making too much soot. As a nice final touch I rub some MIG Productions metallic gunmetal pigment onto the raised areas of the tracks just to represent where the steel has been rubbed to a shine from the tank's movement. I seal it all in with a coat of AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish and that's one historically accurate Pink Panther from the little known SS Fabulous division completely. As with most painting I do, I'm not 100% satisfied. That said, I do think it looks pretty cool and it's definitely quite unusual and amusing. About the only thing it's missing is a decal of the Pink Panther. I did try to find one, but unsurprisingly I couldn't. I'm sure there are ways I could have got suitable decals or stickers or something, but I didn't think it was worth the effort. And not including that makes the joke maybe a little less obvious. Using weathering, I've tried to make it look as though it's just a regular in-service tank rather than one that's just been painted pink as a monument or something. I have seen pink tanks as monuments or in parades, but I find it more entertaining to think that it's just a regular old tank in active service that just happens to be pink. There are many possibilities when thinking about a backstory for this tank being pink. I like to imagine that the commander of this tank is very very cocky and so sure of himself, his tank and crew that he painted his tank pink to make it easy for the enemy to see, so it would be obvious to them how little faith he had in their skills as he destroys them. Something like that. Or just a very fabulous and flamboyant tank company. I am easily amused, if you didn't already know that. Okay, so it might be a pink tank, but the techniques and methods I've used in this video can easily be applied to other coloured vehicles, so if you don't care for pink tanks, maybe you can still get something from this. So what do you think? Do you have any pink tanks of your own? Have you got any other weird and wonderful coloured tanks? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions, suggestions or other comments, relevant or not, they can also go in the comments section. Also, don't forget to do all the YouTube-y things like clicking like if you liked the video, subscribing and sharing, and so forth. If you really like the videos I make, please consider helping to support the channel on Patreon. I would certainly appreciate it and you would get to see my videos a little earlier than everybody else. There's also some patron-only bonus content you could watch. There's a link in the description and on screen now. As always, I shall return soon, so until then, happy modelling and thanks for watching. Farewell.